hello hello everyone you are welcome to the black history buff channel this is stephanie your girl merry christmas and a happy new year in advance if you watched the last video then you would have seen all of our team members wishing each and every one of you seasons greetings do not forget to subscribe to this channel turn on the notification bell because i'm about to share with you very interesting historical fact stay tuned Today our interest is Anna Arnold. This is the story of a young girl who never experienced segregation in her time in a little town where she and her family were the only black people and um, yet she experienced zero segregation only for her to go into the world and then she realized that okay this is not home and she found herself fighting for her people making sure that people saw her and not her color was born on July 5th, 1899 in Marshalltown, Iowa. Her parents were William James Arnold and Mary Ellen Parker Arnold. She moved with her family to Anoka, Minnesota, where her family was the only African-American one in the small town but was never treated differently. I can imagine. <laughs> imagine her going to school and finding out that, babe, this is not your town. In 1918, at the age of 19, Arnold graduated from high school and continued her education at Hermine University, a Methodist college in St. Paul, Minnesota. She was the college's first African-American student, which is another trillion fact. At the age of 23, she became the first African-American graduate with a BA degree in English language. For two years, Arnold taught English and history at Rust College, a historically black college in Holy Spring, Mississippi, where she had a first experience with segregation. And this felt entirely different because she wasn't used to this. She grew up in a town where black and white and orange and blue lived together in harmony. That sounds like paradise, but she literally lived paradise growing up. Imagine facing segregation at a point where she expected things to be small. In 1954, at the age of 55, she became the first African-American woman to hold a mayoral cabinet position in the history of New York City. In 1958, she was a public relations consultant at Fuller Product Company. She became an associate editor and columnist for the New York Age. And in 1959, at the age of 60, she founded Edwin Consultant Services in New York City with her husband, I kept building our influence so her voice could be heard. Anna seems to be a very busy woman, and I like a busy woman. In 1966, she became the co-founder of the National Organization for Women. She held membership in numerous organizations. I know, right? That feels like some ranking thing is going on. <laughs> such as the Child to Study Association, um, Community Council of the City of New York, National Urban League, United Nations Association, Advisory Committee on Alcoholism, Advisory Committee on Drug Addiction, and the National Conference of Christians and Jews. She was an amazing philanthropist as well. I feel like there's a lot more I need to say about her, but man, so much titles. Way to go, Anna. In 1957, Anna became the first woman to serve in the cabinet of the New York City mayor, serving for one term under Robert Wagner. After her husband died in 1987, Anna moved to the Greater Harlem Nursing Home in Harlem. There she died on January 17, 1990, at the age of 90. I feel like... Um, Anna lived a very interesting life, permit me to say. First, she didn't go through the trauma of being a black person during her time. She lived in a small town and no one 
treated each other differently, which is a good thing. And I think that affected our mentality. It affected our upbringing. And even when she met with segregation, you know, finally going into the world, she faced it with confidence, you know, because she had knowledge of how life should be. And she was quick to make that clear to anyone who um, dare treat her differently. That's what I personally think of Anna. You know, she has experienced love and growth, that a world could exist without racism, without conflict, you know, with love and harmony. Um, there is global development. So Anna had that mentality. And I think that also, you know, attributed to the number of things she was capable of doing. What do you guys think? I'd like to see your comments in the comment section below. This is a very short video and most likely the very last for the year. I look forward to seeing you in 2021. <laughs> oh, I'll be super excited, trust me. I look forward to an amazing new year, a much better new year, <laughs> one with lots of opportunities. I'm looking forward to opportunities, I need to be honest with you guys, yes. But above all, I look forward to good health. So guys, stay safe, mask up, and show that you keep your distance. Do not go out unless absolutely necessary. COVID is real, guys. See you guys next video. From Black History Buff community. Thank you so much for sticking with us all through the year. From the bottom of my heart, I wish you a fantastic Christmas. I hope you have the very best time with your friends, your family, and loved ones. Have a great new year. Thank you. Hello there, everyone. My name is Ibuge Obuma, and I'm a content creator for Black History Buff. This is me wishing you a merry, merry Christmas and a wonderful and a happy new year from Delta State, Nigeria. Hello, my name is Eraju Yelari. I'm from Nigeria. I just want to say a very big thank you for following us this year thus far. And I want to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year in advance. Hey guys, this is Stephanie from the Black History of Channel and I'm wishing each and every one of you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year in advance.